Once again in 2021, Sinn Féin holds our Easter 1916 commemoration online while the public health emergency continues. We are reminded of the many different circumstances in which Republicans have honoured the men and women of 1916 and all our Patriot dead over the generations. In jails and prison camps and on the streets in every phase of the struggle for Irish freedom. A year after the Rising, it was Republican women who in 1917 organised the first Easter commemoration. They placed this banner on Liberty Hall where the insurrection was planned and where just a week before the Rising, a young woman worker, Molly O'Reilly, raised the green flag. Speaking later, Connolly said, On that day, the Irish citizen army hoisted and unfurled the green flag of Ireland, emblazoned with the harp without the crown, as the sacred emblem of Ireland's unconquered soul. And it was from Liberty Hall on Monday 24th of April 1916 that they marched out and occupied the General Post Office, proclaiming the Republic. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her own tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. The proclamation was read in front of the GPO by P.H. Pierce. President of the Provisional Government of the Irish Republic and signed by him and his fellow members of that government. In the GPO, overall command of Dublin was taken by James Connolly, whom Pierce described as the guiding brain of our resistance. The building's defence was prepared by the Irish Volunteers and Irish Citizen Army, now together as one force the Irish Republican Army. Across the city, the other leaders were seizing buildings and strategic points. At Stevens Green, the leaders were Michael Mallon and Countess Markovitz. We are ready to fight for the Ireland we love, be the chances great or small. We are willing to die for the flag above, be the chances nothing at all. The Republican forces at Stevens Green came under fire from the British Army in the Shelburne Hotel and had to retreat to the College of Surgeons. But elsewhere, the Republican Army occupied strong points and it took a heavy toll on the enemy to dislodge them. Commandant Tomás McDonough in Jacob's Biscuit Factory. Commandant Eamon Kiant in the South Dublin Union. Commandant Edward Daly in the Four Courts. Commandant Eamon de Valera in Boland's Bakery. And in other posts, such as the Mendicity Institution on Usher's Island, where Captain Sean Houston held out for three days against overwhelming odds. The proclamation's pledge to assert Ireland's rights in arms was being fulfilled. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. Standing on that fundamental right, and again it's serving in arms in the face of the world. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to its cause of its freedom, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. At City Hall, the first Republican to die in the Rising was Captain Sean Connolly. His place in command was taken by Dr. Kathleen Lynn. Fierce fighting took place in the Church Street area where Edward Daly captured and burned Linden Hall barracks. At Mount Street, a handful of volunteers held back hundreds of British soldiers, inflicting heavy casualties, with four volunteers dying in a burning building in the final effort to hold back the troops. Thousands of British reinforcements and heavy artillery were arriving as Easter week wore on. From the Liffey, the Helga gunboat shelled Liberty Hall. Guns and troops were deployed in Trinity College, targeting the GPO and O'Connell Street. Soon the street was in flames. The GPO itself was burning by Friday, and the leaders decided to evacuate. The O'Rahilly led a fatal charge at the British barricade in Moore Street, and he and his men were cut down with machine gun fire. The GPO garrison evacuated the building on Friday evening, entered Moore Lane and the buildings of the block 10 to 25 Moore Street to avoid British gunfire. James Connolly was carried on a stretcher, his ankle shattered by a bullet. On Saturday, around Connolly's bed in number 16 Moore Street, the leaders agreed to surrender.
the fighting was over, but the rising of the Irish people had only just begun. Pierce told the brave men and women of Easter week, We have lived to see an Irish Republic proclaimed. May we live to establish it firmly, and may our children and our children's children enjoy the happiness and prosperity which freedom will bring. In the aftermath, the seven signatories of the proclamation and seven other leaders were executed in Dublin's Kilmainham Jail. Thomas Kent was executed in Cork and Roger Casement in London. Margaret Skinner of Glasgow and Monaghan fought and was wounded and survived. She describes the impression the Rising made on her. For a long time after the Rising, I dreamed every night about it. The dream was not as it actually took place, for the outcome was always successful. My awakening was a bitter disappointment, yet the memory of our failure is a greater memory than many of us had dared to hope. Every Easter since 1916, Republicans have remembered the Patriots of the Rising and all who have died in the struggle for the Irish Republic. Forty years ago, as he lay on hunger strike in the H-blocks of Long Kesh, Bobby Sands wrote, I may die, but the Republic of 1916 will never die. Onward to that Republic and the liberation of our people. Today, Sinn Féin's mission is to complete their work, to build a renewed, reunited Ireland, to fulfil the words of the proclamation. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all of its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally.
The rebels of 1916 set out to liberate our country from British rule and to shape a nation that would thrive and prosper. They stepped into the role of change makers because they believed in the new Ireland, the independent republic so poetically expressed in the proclamation. As a generation impatient for change, they knew their time had come and they seized the day. The legacy of the 1916 rebels bears witness in the Ireland of today. The people of this island, in the turbulence of a pandemic, again find ourselves at a crossroads. 
It's in a time of lives lost and lives disrupted, the failed ways of the old Ireland have been exposed like never before. And as we look forward together, as we seek change, Irish unity comes into focus. A united Ireland presents an exciting opportunity to shape something new, something different, something better than anything that's gone before. A century on from partition, people wake up every morning and know that the divided Ireland of 2021 doesn't work for them or their families. We see the broken politics of partition every day. People's entire lives defined by the search for a home that they can afford, by the struggle to access treatments when they're sick, working long hours and still not making ends meet. Younger people starved of opportunity and rural towns and villages left behind. The lack of fairness and inequality is frightening. So people want better. They're fed up with the politics from a bygone age that holds them back and stifles their potential. The politics that gave us mother and baby homes, industrial schools, mass emigration, fostered by a political class that still desperately clings to the past and to power. We recognise that partition is at the root of these failures and we are fired up with ambition for the future. We see clearly that the task of bringing about real change for workers and families is linked inextricably to the goal of reunifying our country. The politics of a new Ireland has come of age and the grand vision of Pierce and Connolly is renewed. Irish unity means positive change for us all. Not only is it achievable, it is necessary. The practical challenges posed by both COVID-19 and Brexit make this apparent. These crises have reshaped and energised the conversation on a united Ireland. And unity is now being talked about in every corner of our island. This is because Irish unity makes sense. It is the very best idea for the future of Ireland. A united Ireland is an idea whose time has come. And much like the rebels of 1916, our generation too is impatient for change. We refuse to accept the limitations of the past. We know that better is possible and we look with fresh eyes and fresh hearts at the prospect of Irish unity. We are excited and enthusiastic about the new beginning that unity can offer our people. Era Nua, in our Fajr Lenar Janga, our Gultur, Agus our Nairacht Blahu. No longer will we be constrained by the unambitious dogma of official Ireland that so badly failed our parents and their parents before them. No longer will we be told this far and no further. A new generation is rising up with the hope and tenacity to lay claim to our destiny and to the future of our island. So those in political leadership must show an ambition that matches this hope. And nowhere is that more important than in the office of Antishok. We will not be constrained by old, jaded thinking or by those who wish to cast the debate on Irish unity as an exhausted collision between green and orange or as a friction point between Britishness and Irishness. This gets us nowhere. Irish unity is not the politics of shame or loss. It's the politics of progress. The progress of a nation that transcends all the hurt, division and conflict of the past by forging a new future together for all of us. A people moving forward in the inclusive belief that no matter our background, no matter our identity, no matter the journey we've travelled to this point, we can reconcile, we can heal division and we can lift each other up. Because the things we have in common, the things that bind us together, are so much greater than those which divide us. 
In Ireland of 2021, the grave mistake and injustice of partition has come full circle. Partition has failed and unity is the answer. The winds of change blow all round us. It would be unforgivable to emerge from this pandemic and not seize the opportunity to prepare for unity for our new Ireland. We must prepare for a referendum on Irish unity, for the people to have their say. Both governments must prepare for unity and the people must prepare too. Cahamage Larich Fuin Tauhi, Cahamage Olvu Duntauhi Lakela. When it comes to the future of our country, treading water is not good enough. It never has been. Now is the time for real ambition. Friends, today we gather online to honour those who gave their lives for Irish freedom and we send solidarity to the families of our patriot dead. In so doing, we look firmly to the future. The last 12 months have been incredibly difficult for people. However, through the chaos, the hardship and the pain, we now have an exciting opportunity to build something new, something better, a united Ireland. We can do this. We can be the generation that unites Ireland. We, the people of Ireland, are up to this task. During this pandemic, you have responded with togetherness, with kindness and with compassion. This is who we are. These are the values of unity. The rebels of 1916 were the change makers of their day. Today, the role of change maker falls to us. This is our time. The past was for those who seek to divide. The future is for those of us who seek to unite. Those who seek to hold back the tide of change can have yesterday, but tomorrow is ours. A new and united Ireland is on the horizon. Let's seize this moment together. Happy Easter. Eraidlin Lakela is on Fublacht Abu. Lay on a screw, fue la wana.